Have you ever had to push yourself to do something that you're not entirely comfortable doing? Something that you think may be outside of your skill set, even though the people who have trained you have told you that you're ready for this? Well, in this video, I'm going to be flying across the country to do a tricky short field landing in a field I've never seen before with my wife before spending a few days in Devon before hopefully taking off safely in this short field with these particular weights and balances. Am I ready for this challenge? Let's find out. Starting at my home aerodrome of Duxford, just outside Stansted's control airspace, we'll be flying all the way down to Devon to a place called Branscombe Farm. On closer inspection, Branscombe Farm is obviously a farm grass strip that's 650 metres long by 10 metres wide. What I always do when I'm thinking about going to a new aerodrome is, funny enough, booting up the good old bit of Google and having a look at the aerodrome from Google Earth's perspective. So we've got runway 28 and then runway 10. Also what I'll do is I'll just do their little measuring distance thing just to make sure that the Sky Demon plate is accurate. That's not saying that Google measure is accurate either. At the 10 end of the runway, there are 40 foot high lay land eye that we can't see on this rendering. And at the other end, just a low hedge, so nothing to worry about. I'll then spin over so we can actually see what the approach would look like if we come in on both runways. This is really important when it comes to visual when you're coming into land after an hour, hour and a half's flight and all the things that can happen during that flight. Sometimes I'll even print out a visualization on a little bit of A4 paper just to pop on my kneeboard. The next thing I'll do is get the Sky Demon plate because there isn't actually one for poolies on this one and just have a look to see if we can get any takeoff distances or anything like that to make sure it's all okay. After which I also gave them a call and they're really really helpful giving us a briefing on how to get in. So before the flight I thought it would be a good idea to go to Duxford and brush up on my short field landing and takeoff. Roger, go for the kilo. Alright, okay, here we go. Feeder in. Let's be live. Six mile out. Rotate and trim. So we're currently taking off from runway 24 hard at Duxford. Now if you have a look at this lovely little bit of augmented Google Maps here, you'll see that we've actually got two parallel runways at Duxford Airfield. Runway 24 left and also runway 24 right. That's the grass one you can see on the right hand side, denoted by the small white dashes. Now I've taken off on the hard just to get settled into the flight, then come back and land on the grass strip. Now comes the cool bit. I'm going to strap a GoPro so it looks over the right hand or starboard wing and then I can count exactly how many of those white dashes I go over and that will tell me my rough distance with fuel to tabs with just myself in the plane, what my takeoff and landing capabilities are like on a grass strip. This will help to inform me as to my weights and balances and skill level going forward with the trip to Branscombe. Final four, runway 24, grass, golf, and the kilo. Number kilo, Roger, one ahead. Roger, golf, and the kilo. So I'd still say we're a bit quick. Get that nose up. There we go. Holding on the hard, please, for driving traffic on the cross. Holding on the hard, thank you, mate. Yeah. North Papa Kilo, runway 24 cross. Touching your discretion, 320 degrees, 05 knots. Roger, go for the Kilo. On my maid, can't heat. So, for those of you who don't know, this is a terrible approach. It's far too shallow, too low. I was dragging the aeroplane in and uh, yeah, not a great start, but this is what we do it for. Call for Romeo, downwind for a full stop. Call for Romeo, report final, one ahead. One ahead, call for Romeo. So this not being a great approach, I'm probably not gonna jam the brakes on. So there's our threshold, there's our first notch, our second notch, our third notch, now we're properly down, brakes on. Our fourth notch, 
I'd pretty much guarantee if I had to, I'd stop be able to stop the plane that fifth notch there. So let's say we've done five and a half notches till safely stopped. To the uh, start of runway two, poor grass, Gulf Epic Helo. So back on Google Maps, I can now measure out five notches and see roughly how many meters of runway I use. We're looking at about 400 meters there. Remember, this is just indicative. We're not using these as the figures. This is just about the idea of how I can brush up my short field landing and takeoff and roughly what figures I'll be looking at when we do our calculations on the day. Remember, Google doesn't know about wind. It doesn't know about slopes. It doesn't know about wet grass. All those things that you have to put in your safety factors when you're doing your weight balances and and distances in your planning. So it was a little bit of a floaty landing. There was a quite a lot of energy left in the aircraft as we came in. I think I left a bit too much throttle in as well while we were while we were sort of uh, taxiing. So well, taxiing while we were coming in. So we'll see if we can do. Um, Brian probably saw that. It wasn't great. Brian's one of the teachers here. He's going to be like, oh, bloody hell, Jimmy. What was that, bro? And I'm inclined to agree with him. Yeah, so I think I probably used up quite a lot of runway there on that landing. So now we've got our side camera on, we'll be able to count the notches that go past the wing after I've lined up and then refer that back to our Google Maps and know roughly when we got airborne and also when we were roughly at 50 foot altitude clearing any obstacles. Right, so we're going to go, we're going to brakes on, going to go full power. Top on the kilo, line up runway 24 grass, ready for departure. Papa Kilo, runway 24 grass, take off at your discretion. The wind 330 degrees, 05 knots. Roger, Gulf Papa Kilo. Right, so 05 knots, so we're going to feed it in full. Make sure everything's stabilised. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. And go. To be live, just going to Obviously, we've got two stages of flap in here. So there's one notch. There's a second notch. A third notch. She now wants to fly. We're airborne. Fourth notch. Fifth notch. And we'll easily be 50 feet at the sixth notch. So there we go, we've done that test. So back on Google Maps, we can now measure that distance. So let's go three and a half notches to when we actually got into ground effect. So that's 276 meters. And then let's go over to our sixth notch to get up to our roughly 50 feet, which is 479 meters. So now I'm building a bit of knowledge about my capabilities as a pilot doing short field landings and takeoffs in this plane. Let's do a few more and see if I can dial those distances in. So this feels like a nice approach. We're just coming in nice and easy. Got about 200 feet in. I can see that our airspeed is exactly right. Maybe a tiny bit quick. Most pilot operating handbooks will say you need to be slightly slower as you come in on short field landings. So let's see how we go on this one. So there's the threshold. There's our first notch. We're already down. Our second notch put the brakes on, our third notch, I'm pretty sure if I wanted to I could stop by the fourth. But there we go, we are easily, we'd easily be off the runway now if we were doing this properly and we'd be we'd pretty much stopped by the fifth notch. So we've taken quite a lot of distance off just there. That felt a lot nicer, a lot more controlled, this would be the last one I do. And look, a nice and steady 399 metres. I just think I could be a little slower over the threshold, and also I'm a bit low. Um, I could probably do with just being a little bit higher when we come in, and actually when I flare, do more of a flare. I'm almost flying the plane into the runway at the moment. Um, that's kind of what I'm feeling, so I'm just going to give it another try. Just This is, you know, this is what it's all about, isn't it? Just going around, practicing these. Fuel pumps on, anti-collision lights on, Peter heat is on, car peaks cold, flaps are at two, fuel is on right, 
Uh, I think we are all ready to go. Top of the kilo, we line up runway 24 grass, ready for departure. Kilo, take off, I your discussion. The wind is 327 degrees. Roger, Gulf of the kilo. Right, OK. Remember, hold those brakes. So here we are yet again, feeding the power in, holding the brakes on, two stages of flap, and we are off. Flying down the runway in a PA28 at Duxford. Doesn't get any better, does it? There's our first notch. Our second notch, airspeed's building. Third notch, pull up into ground effect. Fourth notch gone by, and fifth notch, and now we're pulling away sixth notch way underneath us actually that didn't look like quite as good a takeoff i think what happened on the first takeoff is i actually left my landing trim in which is a bit of a no-no but it actually took took off better with a bit of landing trim in than it did with neutral takeoff trim that is what i usually set if i'm on the hard runway but still not a bad takeoff there let's see what my landing's like on this go still too fast a bit more trim Come on, just let her, let her down, let her down, nose down, nose up, get that speed off, that's it, that's it, now you're hitting the fucking seam, that's it, this is better, much better, hit the seam, Permission to backtrack to runway 24 threshold, Gulf of the Kilo. Gulf of the Kilo, what's your intention? Uh, one more short field takeoff, a couple of orbits at 4 mile final for runway 24, and then a final run in. I should be back by quarter past six to 20 past six at the latest. Gulf of the Kilo. Gulf of the Kilo, line of runway 24 grass, ready for departure. Gulf of the Kilo, Roger. And, uh, Obviously, there's no circuit after we uh, close, so uh, and make our advisory calls on frequency and uh, advise the guard room. Take off your discretion. Hey, firm, as a final favour, can you roughly let me know when we get airborne on this last takeoff? Gold Papa Kilo? Hold the brakes. He's a run. Anti collision not on. Do you want? She wants to go. And go we will. So as a creme de monte, we've got the guys in the tower looking to see when we get airborne as well. So this should be really, really interesting. There's our first notch. There's our second notch. Our third notch, pull up into ground effect. Fourth notch, nose down, build airspeed. Fifth notch, and then pull up, sixth notch. So a little bit lower there, probably just kept the nose down a little bit longer just to build a bit more airspeed. And I didn't describe this earlier on, but what we do with a short field takeoff is once we get up to about 500 feet, you slowly get rid of the stages of flap. Now, because I'm in a PA28, I don't have to do the old school thing of getting rid of the flaps like you do in a Cessna. I can actually slowly bring them down using like the handbrake lever. And for me, that means we're not lurching the plane about a lot. It seems like a, a lot nicer way to do things and a lot safer as well. So let's see what the helpful guys in Duxford Tower say about when I got airborne. I got a public kilo and uh, got off the air now and uh, you got airborne more or less opposite the crack of the inside. Many thanks, uh, Gulf of the Kilo. Uh, have a lovely evening. Thank you and you, uh, the QNH1009. QNH1009 at Gulf of the Kilo. Thank you. So let's have a look at that. The classic wings hut is that small hut just up there. So let's go down roughly perpendicular to that. Measure that distance. So we've got 258 meters there from getting off the ground. Then obviously our ground effect and then getting off to about 50 feet, 480 meters. But let's think about the fact that I'm probably going to be carrying more fuel and also I'm going to be carrying my wife as well and a couple of bags. So we're going to be going a bit further along the runway, perhaps even 559. But then let's have a look at the whole distance of Branscombe's runway, which we know to be 700 metres because of the research we've already done. 
And there's Brandscoon there. I'm hoping we can take off on 1-0 because there's no 50 foot obstacles at the end of the runway. It's just a small hedge. If we take off on 2-8, we do have some big Leyland to get over when we climb out. So we'll be thinking about all those things when we go on the trip. Or should I say, if we go on the trip, you're never committed to going on the trip until you're actually up there doing it. And even then, you're not actually committed to land at that aerodrome. You always have to be ready for the inevitable cock up or something going wrong or the weather or anything like that and just have it always ready as you go along what airfields you can land at in the event of an emergency. And we'll be looking at that stage of planning after I've done this final landing. Really, really, really happy I did that. That was a good, good sesh there, guys. Really pleased with it. So, there we go, there she is. All tied down. Uh, I'm now gonna go to the pub and have a pint of beer gold. I think I've earned it. That was, what was that? One takeoff off the hard, one landing, backtrack, takeoff, landing, backtrack, takeoff, landing, backtrack, takeoff, landing. Whew, that was good. So I've given myself a proper workout there when it comes to short field takeoffs with any luck and landings uh, and the guy said we were airborne by the time we were at this little hut here that we're just coming up to but that really means that I think we're I think I'm getting airborne after about four, uh, 400 meters maybe a little bit less uh, and it, no, it makes me really quite pleased that I've got another 250 meters um, to abort or something like that when I've got Emily in here <laughs> sorry guys let me just get out of here but that's just completely quiet. I'm the last person here. All good. Really looking forward to it if the weather holds, which it probably won't. It's England. A week or two later, it was the morning of our proposed flight. I checked the weather along the whole route and the weather seemed absolutely perfect. So now I go over my plans one more time for this whole flight. We take off at Duxford and at Royston transfer to London Luton for a traffic service. Along the way, I knew we could have some backup aerodromes of Old Warden and Cranfield. When we get to Leighton Buzzard, we would turn slightly further south and transfer to RAF Benson and try and get a matte penetration into their airspace. If they're not available and they're usually not we would transfer to Bryce Norton and try to get traffic service all the way down as far as physically possible because they always try to chuck you off really quickly because they've got quite a lot on their plate already. Once we've been chucked off with them, we then transfer our radio service to Boscombe Down, noting along the way that we have diversion aerodromes of Abingdon, Fairford, The First Farm, Draycott, Yatesbury, and Keyville and Brown Shutters Farm. So this leg, I was happy that if anything did happen, we've got lots of places to land at. We then transfer to Yeovilton, and then finally, as we got further down towards Branscombe, we then transfer onto Branscombe's safety channel, a really good way for all the pilots to talk to each other in the air so there's no problems. I now printed out my pilot log and this will be sat on my knee when we go flying. So I've got all my headings and levels and also all my radio frequencies and squawk codes and emergency radio frequencies, everything I could possibly need if there's any problems. Now I knew the wind direction on the day, I could guess which runway we would be using as we got down to Branscombe Farm and had a good look on Google Maps just to get into my head exactly what I should be seeing on that approach later on in the flight. Now all I had to do was fuel Papa Kilo right to the top, load my wife and a few bags and bits and pieces to take with us for a few days away. I don't think I can overstate how nervous but also excited I was because this flight, if it went well, would test my concentration, test my radio work, test my navigation, although we're using Sky Demon, and finally test my skills as a pilot and also as a husband.
after a fairly normal takeoff and leveling off at around 2,000 feet, I then just got settled into the cruise and the standard things I've been taught to do when it comes to engine maintenance and management, making sure that everything's okay, keep running my checks, keep running my headings and everything else. I climbed out and then joined my first waypoint at Royston, straight away spoke to Luton and they were only too happy to give us a traffic service. Some pilots do not fly with a traffic service, it's not an obligation, but I much prefer to have that along with a few pairs of eyes looking out of the window, plus Sky Demon and a Sky Echo so I can see and have as much awareness as possible. As we went down towards RAF Benson, I called them up a few times for a matte penetration, but they were not answering. Therefore, it was only prudent to avoid their airspace and switch to Brian. Bryce Norton. Bryce Norton were absolutely fantastic but as soon as I got to the M4 they said right off you go we don't want to hear from you anymore and that was the point at which I transferred to Boscombe down as planned. Really the whole flight all the way down was uneventful apart from the fact that I was trying to find the pyramid stage at Glastonbury and I couldn't see it. We avoided the danger areas at Salisbury Plain and then as forecast the clouds began to thin clear blue sky for the rest of our journey. Finally, we passed through Yeovilton's airspace and then started our descent towards Boscombe Down. This was now the first of two massive moments over the next few days of flying. Could I spot the airfield, just a green strip in a miasma of other green strips and woods? And if I spotted the airfield, would my landing be safe? Would it be smooth? I could see the small town of Seaton just off to the left of our nose there and knew that we were on the right track. We have a slightly offset approach coming into Branson because of noise abatement, which means that it was a slightly more complicated approach than normal. But there were some really defining features along the way, obviously Seaton and the small town of Beer and also Axmouth Harbour. Spotting Branscombe itself was actually quite easy. This is purely because of all the work that we'd done beforehand in the planning stage to have a look at it on Google Maps, to understand what the surrounding terrain was like and what it looked like and understand all the things, the important things, like how high up the runway is, 500 feet above sea level. Because we don't have controlled airspace here, you just knock off 500 feet from your altimeter from the Q&H setting. All I had to do now was put into practice the techniques I'd practiced again and again at Duxford in the weeks before to enact a safe landing. And remembering as well that if anything is wrong, we can bin that landing and do a go around. Guys, watching this back, I mean, it's winter now and I'm watching this, just loving every second of it. Just so, so good. Taxi to the end of the runway, shared a spud with Emily. She was loving every second of it, but really was quite worried as well, I think, as we came into land. She's not used to approaches like that. We got down, parked the plane up, and it was just that moment, it's like, wow, we've just done what would usually take six hours in the car. We've just done that in just over an hour, getting all the way down from Cambridge to Devon parking up, jumping out, and then walking to the pub. Look at the baby. Huh? You happy? Yeah, good. Cute. Let's go and pay our landing fees. Right, so we're in Branscombe, in the, the deepest, darkest bits of Devon. 
I actually landed about three or four knots slower than I usually do, uh, but that made for a really nice landing actually. It was a lovely approach and came in nicely and really sort of interesting things to fly over as we came in. Yeah, and the whole flight really was pretty much uneventful, which is exactly what you want. It was more just doing checks and looking out the window. So yeah, we're down here now, walking down this lovely lane uh, and we're trying to find our way to a pub. Apparently there's a pub down here called the Fountain Head. Hopefully we can sip something from the fountain in the very, very near future. First beer since we've got it. Brannock. When you come to a place like this from East Anglia, you do kind of realise how beautiful our country is. And also why most people down in Devon and Cornwall don't really want us here because they know the secret and it's, uh, I mean, I don't know if I could live here. Could you live here, Bums? Mm -hmm. But we're walking through this beautiful glade, like beautiful valley. There's little little cows going about and some even big cows. You know, there's a whole variety of cow sizes down here. We're staying on the seafront in, in beer at the moment. And um, it's kind of weird actually, because it kind of reminds me of the place I used to stay at in Weymouth with my mum and dad and my, my twin brother. We're not identical, don't worry. Yeah, when I was a kid, so it's kind of nice, isn't it, Emily? Oh, but I am starting to feel the fatigue of an hour and a half flying and pure hell of trying to keep Emily entertained. I'm not going to show you everything that we got up to while we were down in Devon because most of it included cream teas, a couple of beers here and there and a lovely pot of whelks. I am a big fan of whelks. On the final morning I woke up early with the knowledge that I had the hardest part of the whole weekend ahead. The short field takeoff which I generally see is 50 to 100% harder than a landing. I'd taken the drone down with us as well and watched a small fishing boat going out on its own little voyage for the day but one that they're probably a lot more used to doing than what I'd be doing later on and the footage I captured before we packed to our bags and walked back to the plane. It's just absolutely beautiful. Nice to get up early and to get outside and just see the world, to see all these small boats with their own voyages and their own stories of the people who've travelled in them. But now we had to embark on our journey home and, as I've said, the most challenging part of this whole weekend. The airstrip owner said to me, if there's one piece of advice I could give you, is if you are not airborne or in ground effect by the windsock, abort. Cut the engine, slam the brakes on, and try not to go into the hedge at the end of the runway. All those hours of practice, hours of training, time down at Duxford brushing up my short field landings are for moments like this. I put in two stages of flat, then I take them out again and then put them back in again before holding her back, maximum RPM and releasing the brakes.
skies, a perfect short field takeoff. I don't even know what I was worried about. Papakilo was teasing to get into the air at 60 knots and just a slight tug back up into ground effect. We were up probably about 50 to 100 meters before the windsock into ground effect and then climbing away up to our cruise altitude of two and a half thousand feet. An amazing moment in my life to be able to do this with my wife. And yes, that's a lyric. But look at the views over the sea, all these things you don't get to do. People always say to me, oh my God, you're so lucky that you can do this. I'm sorry, it's nothing to do with luck. It's the fact that I went out and learned to fly. It's the fact that it took me three or four years and it wasn't that ridiculous amount of money that everyone thinks it is. It took, cost me six and a half thousand pounds over three years. And sometimes I think if you've got something you desperately want to do, something that you think is maybe not attainable, just do what I did and take that first little step. Just book that first lesson or go and do that first little thing to get on the ladder, the first rung, and just see where it takes you. Because there were a million times throughout my training where it just felt like I was never gonna pass and I would just fail. And I just stuck at it. And today, this is the sort of thing I'm doing. So if you do have a dream, why don't you just give it a go? The flight back was uneventful, aside of some poor weather along the way, which required me to speak to Boscombe Down and they rung up Gloucester to get some weather reports for us and then radio us back. Just love the way that the radio community out there and the general aviation community are so helpful. Got back to Duxford for a standard landing and then home. If you like Lad Bible's minutes with interviews or long format interviews with people who've had interesting lives, then follow my new YouTube channel, Life in Deep. We've already interviewed international drug smugglers and policemen and have Holocaust survivors and many more interesting people to interview next year. See you in the next Times of James video, guys. Goodbye.